Hey, what's up, YouTube? Uh, bringing you two uh, PPKs, one by uh, Smith & Wesson down here in the bottom, and uh, the one made by Inner Arms up here in the top. Uh, they're all stock, with the exception of the Inner Arms has the Pacmar grips, and I put the original uh, Walther grips on here. Uh, what this video is going to be about is, is you know, if you're looking to buy a PPK, and, you know, what I heard was, oh, get the Inner Arms version, don't get the Smith & Wesson, Smith & Wesson's a piece of junk, blah, blah, blah. You know, it just didn't make any sense to me, and the only way I could figure this out was to, you know, I guess own them both. Ha <laughs> ha! Now I do. So I'm going to give you guys uh, a what the differences are between the two. Uh, so in case you guys want to go out and buy one, you'll know. So Smith and Wesson, from after I've kind of torn all these apart and looked at them and cleaned them and shot them and all this stuff. Smith and Wesson made a lot of good improvements on their uh, on their PPK version, at least in my opinion, and and I'll go on those in a second. But uh, the history behind it was from about about ten years of manufacturing it, they had a recall, and I'll show you that in a bit. But the, it was whenever you would decock the gun, and if you had a round in the uh, the the barrel, it is quote unquote possible. That it could go off, meaning that the the hammer block didn't um, didn't uh, block the trigger coming down, and it was just like pulling the trigger. And they had a recall, and everybody sent them in, but you know they kind of put a game of a black eye. But the modifications that they made were that were good were good, and I'll hit those in a second. So anyway, right off the bat is to understand um, the. The, the feed ramp. This is the inner arms version. And I'm going to play around with my uh, focus here for a bit. And what you're going to see is um, if I can grab, let me, let me pull this in real quick, get it really tight. Right there on the feed ramp, you can see that there's a little bit of a, of a hump. I'm going to get as close as I can. And this is, like I said, this is the inner arm. So right here, and and even though I really haven't had any problems with it, but uh, one of the issues that had been told was that the, you know, feeding uh, hollow points was giving some problems. Now, if I set this down and lift up the the Smith and Wesson, you can see that when they made the change in there, that that's a flush. And so they made this area right here flush to it, and and helped helped you know prevent any jams. Now once again, I haven't had any problems with either one of them, both with hollow points or not. But but I can definitely see why that was a, a better thing to have. Uh, the other thing is the spring on on the Smith and Wesson. It's 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 a little tighter, at least because it's on this one. But it's got a it's got a coil. It's got a flat end on on both sides. If you can see that, and it's got a pretty pretty tight little fit on the barrel, whereas the one that came with the uh, inner arms, not so much. You know, it's just got a, a cut down uh, section right here, and the flats are on the ends. And I've seen this on on a, a lot of them, but it 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 goes on there a lot a lot more a lot more loose, as you can see. As compared to the one on the on the Smith, so let me put these together and I'll show you guys some of the other other uh, other changes on here. Um, one of the one of the areas that I want to talk about is uh, that I was watched a couple of videos and and some folks were talking about a hammer block, and this isn't as much as about the recall thing, but about if the hammer gets hit on the end. Will uh will the gun fire? And I'm going to show you how that's working. So, if if you push on this trigger, uh, this doesn't go forward, okay? And this is on the Smith and Wesson, and the same thing applies for the uh the one made by Inner Arms. You push on that hammer, it won't move. Now, if if I pull the hammer back, and and you can see up in there. Is the uh, the uh, the the firing pin? 
And what happens is when you when you rotate the decocker, uh, you can see those little feet start to come out right there, and that's what blocks the what decocks and also keeps the hammer from hitting the firing pin. And so when I put it back off of safety, you can see now that it's open. But when you when I pull the trigger, which I'm going to pull right here. And I'm gonna keep keep the trigger down. What you'll notice is right there when I when I push the hammer. See, it'll go forward now. And and actually, you know, it's hitting it's hitting the firing pin. Now, if I let off the trigger, it won't go forward. And that's your that's your hammer safety. So yes, you you can hit the back of the trigger and it won't fire. Once again, that's the inner armor's version. And the same thing applies to the Smith and West if I hold the trigger down as if it fired and I you know the trigger will go forward but when I let off the trigger it's locked out so that's that's the part of that about the uh, the hammer safety uh, there was some confusion at least that I had but I found them you know that they both have the same features one of the things you can see right off the bat is the beaver tail on the inner arms is much shorter and the one on the Smith & Wesson is much longer and actually that makes it a lot more comfortable it really sits and rides here now they you know it's for it's supposedly for slide bite I haven't had that problem with either one but I could definitely see if I just grab this really quick uh, it doesn't you know it doesn't really want to to jump you know if I had to do it in a hurry the the Smith & Wesson it's it's a it's very prominent and if you order some grips like uh, like like Packmeyer, uh, you do have to specify whether they're for the inner arms version or for the uh, the uh, Smith and Wesson version because they have to compensate for that longer be beaver tail. The other thing that I noticed was the trigger. The trigger on the Smith and Wesson is is smooth, and they're both comfortable. So let me get up really nice and close on there. So that's the Smith and Wesson trigger, and this is the inner arms trigger, and it's serrated. Uh, in terms of quality, they're they're both about equal. Um, you take them apart, they're both they're both made very well, and they both feel good. The triggers feel feel very very similar. Uh, sight pictures are are identical. You know, so with the you know um, the original grips, if you put them on there, it's it it's a little thinner. You know, and if you put on wood grips or some of the pack Myers, uh, it makes it a little thicker. Now I like it that way because it's easier for me to grip. But um, but anyway, you know, like I said, this isn't a who's better or who's worse. I think you know if I had a chance to buy either one of these firearms, I would, and I did, and I think they're. Uh, both excellent. They're both very well made. You know, it's unfortunate that uh, Smith and Wesson went through that recall and kind of gave them a, a black eye on the on the thing. But uh, oh yeah, and that's that's one other thing I almost forgot. If you're interested in buying a Smith and Wesson and you want to know whether it has been um, repaired or fixed or you know somebody had sent it in, you can see this. Go to Smith and Wesson's website. But what they'll do is is they'll they'll they even say on their website what they do and right there you see that little dot like somebody poked it with a hard pencil so to so to speak let me point to it right right there that is a stamp that Smith and Wesson will put onto the firearm to say that this one has had the trigger and and uh, trigger guard assembly replaced and that's what that means so if you ever look at one look to find to see that dot now Smith & Wesson will send them in I mean you can send in the Smith & Wesson they'll fix it you know for free if you find one that hasn't had it but but by now since it's been you know fairly known what the issue is uh, I would assume if you find a used one you know more more than likely it's already been fixed but that's what you want to look for but anyway, uh, if you have a chance to pick one, some of these up, um, do. These are really fine firearms, and 
the recoil on them is is very minimal compared to like an LCP or a bodyguard or uh, even kind of a 238. This thing is a really nice shooter. It's fun to shoot. You can just shoot it all day and just beat your hand up like some of those lighter polymer 380s, and you'll have a lot of fun with it. And uh, you know, if you can find them. But if you do, you know, get either one. You won't. Uh, you won't. Uh, be uh, sad either way, whichever you go, whether it's a Smith and Wesson or, or the Inner Arms. You know, if I had to, if I had to have a choice, I would probably go with the Smith and Wesson because uh, of, of the positive updates that they've done to it with the feed ramp and the beaver tail and, and that smoother trigger. I tend to like. So, anyway, that's it. Have fun.